So let's begin with the very basic concepts of biochemistry. So first we'll try to understand what are monomers, what are polymers, how the bigger molecules are being formed, and then how do they form carbohydrates bonds. In biochemistry, the basic thing that we understand about the organic molecules is the molecules which are made up of carbon. So these things, the organic molecules, the chemical compounds which are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sometimes nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur together are considered as the organic molecules which have carbon as a backbone. Why carbon is so important? Because we know that carbon has four valence electrons, so it has capability of finding four covalent bonds with different compounds and can form the chain of carbons of any length, rest of the valencies will be filled up by the hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, other elements, but the carbon can form linear as well as the branched structures and it can form very huge molecules and that those are important to us and they, uh, as macromolecules. Now, there are four major classes of macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. We'll understand about one by one. So let's consider about the carbohydrates first. So before we move to that, there is an important term that we must be aware of is the polymer. So polymer is nothing but it's when many repeating units, many small units, they connect together with certain bonds, it is called as a polymer. So monomers are like small beads together. And if you put all the beads in a string and make a necklace or a bracelet, it forms a structure with a string and repeating units of these beads. That is what you call it as the polymer. So monomer is a single unit while the polymer is a bigger structure, so that is why we call it as a macromolecule, how these organic compounds are identified, so their identification is done with the help of certain functional groups. Now, what are functional groups? So, there are various examples which we are, we will be using predominantly here for understanding these four classes are hydroxyl group, carboxylic group, and amino group. Otherwise, you have so many of uh, groups, the functional groups present, but predominantly we are going to use these three. So, I will mention about these three here. While the functional groups can be uh, considered as those groups which give certain identity to the compounds, like we will have certain identity about ourselves. Like someone among the group of friends, someone is good at writing someone is good in sports someone is good in studies and how do we how do we appear so this is how people can distinguish among us so this is how these functional groups are certain properties which give the identification to various organic compounds right so uh, here these are the building blocks which means again i would say these are the monomers and these are the polymers. So macromolecules are nothing but the polymers and the building blocks are monomers. Sugars, when the sugar, simple sugars combine together to form polysaccharides or the uh, biomolecules or the carbohydrates. Fatty acids form fatty acids, lipids, fats and lipids, amino acids combine together to form proteins, nucle nucleotides combine together to form the nucleic acids which are our DNA and RNA. Now we'll talk about the carbon. So we understood the importance of carbon. As you can see, I had mentioned that carbon can form any length of the molecule over here because it is versatile and it can form variety of molecules because of its four valence electrons. Further, so you can compare this with the pieces of Legos, uh, uh, many pieces of Legos will combine together to form any structure. Any bigger Lego can be formed. So these can be considered as the monomers. And when they form a bigger structure, that can be compared with the polymers. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the major sources of energy of the cells. They are instant form of energy. And apart from that, they are major structural components of the plant cell. As I had mentioned earlier, that the cellulose 
is a component of the cell wall right it is the component of the cell wall and apart from that the glucose is the monomer or the building block of it's the simplest sugar we have for making these macromolecules so glucose fructose galactose these are all examples of simple sugars which we consider as the mono monosaccharides when they combine together they form oligosaccharides oligo means few so when you have few particles few molecules of monosaccharides like disaccharides tri tetrasaccharide when two molecules three molecules four molecules will combine and they form the di tri tetrasaccharides like we have sucrose which is a disaccharide maltose which is a disaccharide and polysaccharide when you have many such sugars joined one after another they will form several glucose molecules will join and these are the examples which we have here starch then you have cellulose you have glycogen so starch is a, a plant storage material while glycogen is the animal storage material and the cellulose is the material of the plant cell wall so it's a structural component gives the strength to the leaf now these are the structures now if you annotate here so these are at the edges you have carbons all of these are carbons carbons and carbons so glucose galactose fructose all are our monosaccharides right monosaccharides that means these are the building blocks they can be in a straight chain or the linear chain form or make a ring structure as well so in, they exist as both the forms now when you add the multiple units like this here it will form a polymer let's try to understand how the polymers are being formed so to understand that we know there are two processes this process i will write it here as dehydration synthesis now you don't have to memorize things in biology but you have to understand the concept let's see here these are the two monomers glucose and fructose now if you observe you will find that here you have oh group and here also you have the oh group now when these oh groups will carry out the function as i had mentioned dehydration which means water will be removed water will be deleted so you just take out a water molecule from here so this water molecule have been has been taken out so what is remaining here this oxygen is present and this oxygen will form a bond over here so this bond i am talking about which we call it as the beta glycosidic bond and this joins two monomers of the sugars to form a disaccharide why disaccharide because two molecules of sugars are there so dehydration means removal of water and synthesis means making a molecule constructing a molecule so look at these things when this chain grows like you keep on adding the uh, the monomers here this chain will grow like this and this is the bond which connects two monomers together right this bond this bond this bond this bond this bond so this is how the longer structures will be formed from the monosaccharides to polysaccharides so we understood about how carbohydrates are important to us how they store energy they are the instant forms of energy so the the energy is being stored inside our body in the form of glycogen all the animals they store energy in the form of glycogen which is a polymer of sugar in plants the polymer which is formed which is a storage of energy is the starch that is also a polymer of glucose apart from that we have cellulose which forms the structural component like we can say the cell wall of the plant cell is made up of cellulose in